um, project that we started uh, talking and collaborating. So, Ethan, can you please join me on the stage? All right. And you're going to you. have a tell a joke or two because I need to set yeah. you up. There oh, you yeah, tell a joke. I, I was actually trying to figure out whether to wear this or have the mic, but I, I want to be an orchestra when I talk to you guys. So, there's my joke. <laughs> yeah, you can take the mic back, though. There you go. Okay, so thank you, Luca, uh, for the introduction. Uh, I've been working with Luca for the last six weeks. Uh, we're recent partners with Eternity Ventures, and it's been actually very exciting. I've been working with CryptoTask, which is also an amazing team as well. So really happy to be here and get a chance to present about crowd holding and what we're doing with Eternity. So to discuss a little bit about the problem, when you look at other sort of other uh, reward based forums so steemit i think all you guys know steemit steemit is actually considered the most successful dapp on the market they have roughly 5000 users uh, daily active but what there is certain problems with what they're doing uh, they are about a model that allows the community to tip the publishers but these tipping features is coming directly from inflation of their currency. So they have no actual real model that is bringing in revenue. They're assuming that speculation will drive up and allow their token to survive. But as you see, what we saw with the bubble pop, this doesn't last forever. This whole market effect that a lot of people all believe in will end up slowly dying. You actually need to go back a little bit to the basics and find a revenue stream, offer a service that someone wants to pay for. So in the future, this really lacks, is really a big problem because people won't just want to donate all the time for these publishers. And this is a very similar aspect to Publish OX. They're actually spending a lot of money taking the token rewards and giving it to their publishers. Again, it does allow for a quick uh, jump into the market and trying to grow, but over time, this just won't survive. So what we're doing is, in a way, uh, a bit of the opposite. We have more of a similar model to a media business model. So in a media business model, the publisher pays uh, to showcase their article, and then you get the traffic, people reading about to come to visit your product. And that's the service as a business. And so we're doing the same thing. Uh, and, and we're actually allowing the commenters uh, and the, so the commenters, the, the people engaged to be rewarded for an action. Uh, and so that's the major difference uh, with our reward-based forum. And so crowd holding, what we are is, is pretty simple. We're a feedback application where the businesses can place micro tasks, attaching a reward to it, uh, and then allowing our community members to help them. This can be discovering pain points. Um, for example, CryptoTas had a great uh, case study where they got freelance horror stories uh, to allow them to develop better. Um, and a lot of this, so what we're doing is matching with Eternity's process fit, where you talk about, where you bring on for product testing, uh, you do competitor analysis, uh, you even can do growth hacking. It's almost endless the amount of micro tasks you can get the community to do, and they're getting rewarded in your asset for that. So this is just sort of some images of our application. And this is the news feed with the micro tasks. You recognize the graffiti app from the conference. Uh, and this is a, the Eternity project page there. So our rewarding system is quite unique. So when a user comes on we to post input, we let them know how they're going to be rewarded. So how we're doing it is 65% uh, uh, of the reward is going to the commenters who are putting their input and their action. And 35% is actually going to the voters. But there's a catch. As a voter, you're only allowed seven votes, and you don't see who else votes as well. 
you have to guess as a user what you think is the top 50% comments. Sort of like Family Feud. So you have to figure out what you think the crowd is. And what, why this is really interesting is it accurately ranks the feedback. So anyone that just says, oh, good project, they get to the bottom because no, everyone knows they're not going to get a reward for that type of comment. And this is a way uh, that we've discovered is extremely efficient to crowdsource people's input. Uh, in addition, we have moderators that actually, when they combine with each other, can report the comments when someone writes spam, maybe it's in a different language, there's diff or it's plagiarism. So we have even the moderators helping. So this has created sort of this clean sheet, accurately uh, ranked crowdsource system within our application. Now, this is one of our most recent innovation and features, and it's quite interesting. This is, in a way, 90s technology. So what we developed was a widget, three lines of code that you can place on your product or website. You basically just hit the feedback button. And for example, adshares.net is currently using our widget. You can give, the business can place questions, and you can crowdsource the feedback specifically for your product manager to analyze for and to develop. Uh, at the same time, you're engaging your users on your website. And it's this unique model where we're, in a way, sharing as a community together. So it's a pretty cool product we're developing. And this is what we're noticing is actually helping increasing our traffic on our application. So right now, at our lifetime of, of crowd holding has been alive. We've had 124 projects uh, come on board. Uh, we have 2,500 weekly active users. Uh, and these are commenters, voters, and readers that are returning. And in addition, we've had over 1,000 tasks posted on crowd holding. So uh, it's been a, a great journey so far with our growth. Um, we're happy to show these. And this is some of our growth in the last three months from Alexa rankings. And we are, this is actually off of a, a zero marketing budget. Uh, how our system works is just slowly, naturally growing. And you can just see it from the statistics of our traffic growth um, that we're on to something here. So the, the next steps, and especially with the partnership with Eternity, is going to be quite exciting to keep on growing uh, this growth with crowd holding. So, a history of perseverance. In the, when we actually raised our first ICO back 2018 January. And we raised 2,500 in Ether right when Ethereum was 1,300. It was like February 13th, the day that it started to fall. So, and it, it was interesting because I was talking to some other people in the scene during, you know, the 2018 pop. And in a way, we were discussing how a lot of the projects that truly believed in blockchain and the ecosystem weren't really hedging as much. What they were doing was they were paying their employees in Ethereum or the cryptocurrency they raised. Uh, they were doing things that wanted to contribute to the economy. And then what happened with it popping, a lot of actually the real true projects you know, were hurt from it. Uh, like us too, we even we we lost a majority of what we had to fundraise. So we went on this roller coaster ride of try, building up a team to then downsizing the team and then back to bootstrapping and growing again. But what is crucial with this type of of doing this is that we were able to survive. In a way, when you look at like the internet bubble pop, 95% uh, of the companies failed then. So you have to expect that we're even reaching towards that direction right now. The, the, the idea that 5% of this market is going to be hold the market share is crucial. So survival was definitely key to bring us where we are right now and persevering. Uh, even in the early days, this was interesting, we were working on a model to doing a revenue share. So it was this model, but we wanted companies, to our startups, to offer 1% of their revenue. But what we discovered was that Startups outside, before discovering the crypto industry, outside of the crypto industry, weren't transparent. It was very difficult for them to ask the crowd problems that they needed solving. It was the, also this idea that someone's going to copy my, my startup and then I'm going to lose. 
And, and another even big issue is they were all interested to place 1%, but they were fearing VC companies wouldn't invest them if they did some such crazy idea of giving to the public 1% of their future revenue. So they grow together. Um, but what we discovered pivoting into the cryptocurrency and, and, and basically blockchain was that in this industry, you have to be on almost 100% transparent to succeed. You have to build your white paper, displaying it to all your community. So if you're not transparent, you're not accepted. And so that's where we saw uh, a way to enter. It was perfect for us. In addition, uh, a token can be anything. It can be a utility, a loyalty, an equity, a revenue share. And so that gave us that, that concept was, very, it was new, but also wanted in the blockchain industry, in the crypto industry. So that is like one of the major reasons we pivoted, and it was a, it was a great idea to do that at that time. So this is the team. Uh, I remember one a mentor told me once, Ethan, uh, s always surround yourself with people smarter than you. It's like that saying that if you surround yourself with Einstein, you become Einstein. So I, that's, that's when I was coming up with crowd holding. I found my, my, my top three guys, uh, and it's been a pleasure. We've, we've had a, a tough road at times, right, from the ICO to, to getting to where we are now, but it's been, it's been exciting. Now, this is something what, how I see and position ourselves uh, as crowd holding. So you, you might be familiar with Product Hunt, right? Product Hunt, you can, as a business, you place a project page, you post about what you're doing, and the Product Hunt community talks with you, right? So very similar aspects, but we have a reward-based system along with ours. Well, one thing that they did was they partnered with AngelList. And in fact, AngelList had acquired them. And why that was crucial was Product Hunt was actually fueling the new businesses and community to AngelList's ecosystem. This is actually one of a big reason why AngelList strengthened and got bigger and is, con and, and is actually doing very well as a company. And how I picture this and how I see my vision working with Eternity is crowd holding what we are is we are the product hunt of the crypto industry. This is where we're positioning exactly where we want to be. And what we now see is we see Eternity as our angel list to help bring and fuel uh, new, I new ideas, bring the community involved, uh, discover new projects, help actually develop and find the use cases with our community for all the apps. Our goal at Crowdholding would be to make sure we can help Eternity's apps find their use case, right? We all know this market effect is not gonna go on forever. We need to actually find what we call purchasing power, right? I'm purchasing this token because I'm using it to give me something. So this is something important that we all are, we're working on with all the apps in Eternity to accomplish, and it's gonna be an exciting ahead uh, to be able to do this. Now, we do have some exciting news. Uh, we are officially integrated to Mainnet Eternity, so this actually makes us an app. Is that correct, Luca? We're an app? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we'll, we're, now, my, our, my CTO, Rosario, he's all about soft launches, so I can't announce this really to my community until Monday, where I'm setting up Monday and Tuesday a marketing campaign, but next week, you will see live transaction uh, of Eternity tokens on crowd holding, so, yeah. And now, one, one thing I gotta, I gotta say, especially for uh, our CTO, Rosario, when we were doing the same integration with Ethereum uh, back uh, last year, it took us three months to build it. Uh, and with Eternity, it only took us three weeks. And I think one of the, one of definitely the causes of this is it's easier than Ethereum, for sure. But if it wasn't for the help, uh, especially with uh, developers from Eternity and being super fast, answering our questions, actually also Milan, who was helping us out while we were building it, um, it was great. So definitely excited that we, uh, we're gonna begin having the transactions. And you can see this is where, 
This is what we did yesterday. We did the transactions. This is a user profile. And everything was completed. And it's ready to go. So we announce it next week. And I guess a little bit, I'll tell you a little bit about the integration. How it works is this is a reward distribution. So when you create a project, what's happening is you're depositing any app token you want or AE token uh, into your account. And then you can use that as a reward to our community. And so what happens after the reward system completes, task expires, this reward of the Eternity tokens or any app tokens gets distributed to the users for their input and work on crowd holding. So what's next in the future? So how we see what we are planning to do and what we want to do is look into, now our YUP token is on the Ethereum blockchain. We want to begin migrating this to the Eternity blockchain. Um, and this is important. The YUP is the purchasing power on our application. This is what people currently buy uh, to be able to publish on crowd holding. So having this being connected to Eternity will be very good for uh, the ecosystem because of the purchasing power that we've created with crowd holding. And one thing that's crucial and very important is our application can accept any Ethereum blockchain project. And, we, and you know, in the future, potentially, we could be adding more blockchains. This is a chance for crowd holding to also help recruit other projects in the scene uh, to join Eternity. You know? In a way, if we become our token and our ecosystem as part of Eternity, we need to help Eternity succeed. So by doing that, it would be, we would also be involved with helping recruiting projects also and making sure to help the current apps that go through Starfleet become successful. So thanks, guys. Last little quote by Eric Schmidt. I always like this because I'm in, no one's figured out to monetize crowdsourcing yet. And uh, I'm always trying to find the solution. And thanks, guys. Appreciate it.